In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. St. Paul speaks to us today of the mystery of baptism, of our dying and rising of Christ. St. Mark gives us the second multiplication of the loaves of bread and fishes. These seemingly unconnected ideas and considering together lead us to the same mystery of the Father's great abundance, his grace, his love for us as reflected in baptism and in the Holy Eucharist. Both of these extracts are in fact related as they touch one of the two great sacraments which are given to us in order to bring us to eternal life, life beyond the capacity of our nature to attain, except by grace. To understand this better, let us place the event from the gospel in its larger context. What happens immediately after this event? Our Lord and his disciples get into a boat and arrive in parts of Dalamunca. Here, Pharisees ask him for a sign. He refuses and leaves them again by the same boat, coming to the other side of the water warns his disciples to be wary of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. His disciples thought that our Lord said this because they forgot to bring more than one loaf of bread with them. Knowing what is in their hearts, he scolds them for being slow to understand and reminds them that twice already he has multiplied the loaves and fishes asking them how much was left over each time. This event comes after he has healed the man who is deaf and dumb and before he heals the man who is blind. In both cases, our Lord healed them with his saliva. In the first case, he says, Ephata, meaning be opened. In the rite of baptism, we find this same action. This is not because Christ needs something physical to communicate his power. He freely chooses to use physical things because they are a sign to us, we who are physical as well as spiritual beings. In the multiplication of the loaves, he who could heal at will could also have eliminated the hunger of the crowd or even turned the rocks into bread but he chose to work with what little was at hand, a loaf of bread and a few fish. By this, he shows his disciples his power while leading them to have more faith in him. He took what they had and he broke it and gave it to them and they to the people. His disciples, were witnesses more so than the people of the miracle that happened. Notice, nothing was taken from the people, but only a loaf and some fishes from the disciples. The people only received what the Lord had given them, and this through the ministry of the disciples. By the sacramental economy, we are initiated into a great mystery, supernatural life, the life of the Trinity, a life of abundance, a life of knowing and of loving God the Father. By baptism, we who are spiritually deaf, dumb, and blind are made to hear, speak, and see. Our ears are opened to the voice of the incarnate word, our mouths made to proclaim his praise, and by faith we are brought to see, not all at once, but little by little the depths of the truths that the disciples were slow to understand. Among these truths is the great mystery 
of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes, which points to the unleavened truth of Christ himself. This event occur occurs shortly before our Lord questions his disciples, asking them who men say that he is and who they say he is. His actions reveals his power, but does not reveal his nature. This mystery remains hidden to be revealed only by the Father. He who fed the thousands is the bread of life who has come down from heaven into the world so that those who believe in him may have life and have it abundantly. The collection of fragments is a sign of this abundance. The outpouring of grace that everyone can have their fill and yet there will be more. Many gathered to hear and were fed. Later, these same people walked away from him when he said that he was the bread of life, that his flesh was true food and his blood true drink. They clung to his power, but not to his person. They sought to use him as they wanted to make him their king, but they were not prepared to be transformed by him who sought his reign in their hearts. The reign of grace takes place not by violence, even though our king submitted to a most violent death. His life was not taken from him, but he laid it down to show us that we too must die to ourselves, not by violence from another, but by our own choice, taking up our cross and following him so that in dying with him, we should rise to a new life dead to sin. To show the abundance of his mercy, he was not content to once multiply loaves and fishes so as to feed the multitudes, nor twice. Instead, our Lord offers his very flesh and blood on the wood of the cross to be food for men so that we may eat from a tree transformed from an instrument of death to the tree of life. By the priesthood Christ instituted on the night he was betrayed, he multiplies not loaves and fishes, but the participations in his one sacrifice made present through the double consecration of bread and wine, so that whoever receives from this altar the body and blood of Christ may be filled with every heavenly grace and blessing knowing not only his power, but his divinity. We can be assured by his own words that in doing what he has commanded, we are not left with less than what he gave to his disciples. Christ commanded them to do this. That is what he himself has done. The words received are his own words and are pronounced in his own person. The sacred words of the word made flesh are effective to whom they are given to consecrate the body and blood of the incarnate word so that we may taste the goodness of the Lord and savor his mercy. We are saved from sin and its punishments through baptism which reunites us to Christ by uniting us to his death, his burial, and his resurrection. By this sacrifice, we are given a pledge of future glory and sustained by his sacred body and precious blood, sustained in eternal life against the temptation of sin. Our forefathers ate manna in the desert, but they died. They died because this food was for the body still under the sentence of death. Its effect lasted only for a time, needing to be renewed daily. The true bread from heaven, this, our daily bread, is not received often because its effect is temporary, but because we are not yet completely transformed by it. By frequent and devout Holy Communion, we are nourished 
not because we assimilate this spiritual food into our substance, but rather we are assimilated into him who feeds us. By the multiplication of the loaves and fishes, we should recognize the power of God to supply our need with overflowing abundance. He does not give us only what we need. He gives us his very self and without reserve. Knowing that there will always be grace and abundance, let us not hesitate to have our fill by giving ourselves ever more completely to his transforming power offered in the holy sacrament of the altar. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.